Number thirty-three has a sort of collective mingate and a bit of a remove and never closed, a continuation of the street. Really, peddlers stream in and out all day long. The girls don't go to the gate to buy bingard; they buy in their rooms. Obviously, then there's a little point in having eighteen name plates on the main gate. Instead, the girls have signs over their sliding doors: Hall of Great Patience. Hall of good fortune and so on. Each girl puts her card in a corner of the sign. In our place, well, it's really my wife's place. We follow the house custom. My wife's card, about the size of four cigarette packs, sits over the sliding door. I don't mess with the residents. I don't even greet them. I don't want to greet anyone except my wife because. It seems to me that greeting people or mixing with people would not be good for my wife's reputation. That's how important she is to me. Why do I prize her so? I prize her because she is a flower among flowers. Like her name card, she is the smallest and the most beautiful of the flowers in the eighteen houses. She lights up a sunless area under the galvanized roof. The way I cling to this beautiful flower makes me indescribably ashamed to be who I am. I love my room. It's not really a house. We don't have a house. The temperature is right for my body temperature, and the degree of dimness is appropriate for good sight. I never aspire to a cooler or warmer room. I don't want a room that's brighter or more comfortable. This room fulfills my needs, and I reciprocate with feelings of gratitude. I'm delighted by the thought that perhaps I came into the world with this room in mind. I don't calculate happiness or unhappiness. In other words, when I'm happy, I don't need to think, and by the same token, when I'm unhappy, I find it unnecessary to think. To spend each day as it comes in utter unthinking idleness, for me that is the ultimate perfection. No more to be said. I'm most content, most at ease, idling my time away in a room that matches my mind and body. In other words, I have reached an absolute state of being that forswears worldly considerations such as happiness and unhappiness, and I like this. If you count from the main gate inwards, my room, my absolute space is room seven, a bit of lucky seven, I suppose. I love the number seven. To me, it's like a government decoration. Who'd guess that this room, split in two by a paper partition, is a symbol of my karma? The sun comes into the outer room. A book jacket-sized chunk of early morning sunlight, by afternoon when it leaves, is reduced to the size of a handkerchief. The sun never gets into the inner room, which, needless to say, is my room. I can't remember whether it was me or my wife decided she should have the room with the sunlight, and I should have the room with no sunlight. But I have no complaints. When my wife goes out for the day. I slip quickly into a room and open the window on the east side. When I open the window, streaming sunlight plays across our dressing table until all the tiny bottles glitter sumptuously. Looking at this glittering array is a joy beyond the words. I take out the tiny magnifying glass and drag it across the chirigami tissue my wife uses, and I play the fire game, reflecting the parallel sun rays. And concentrating them into a focal point until the tissue scorches and a slender thread of smoke appears. The savor of impatient anxiety I experience during those few seconds, while waiting for the inevitable hole to burn in the paper, brings a thrill of exquisite pleasure. So acute, I think I'll die. When I'm tired of the fire game, I take out my wife's hand meter. And play all sorts of games with it. The only practical use a meter has is to show your face. Otherwise, it's a toy. I soon tired of this too. 
the focus of my amusement moves from physical things to the things of the mind. I toss aside the hand mirror and move to my wife's dressing table, to the wide variety of cosmetic bottles lined up on display there. These bottles are the most glamorous things in the world. I choose one, pull out the stopper, put the bottle to my nose, and take a gentle, breathless sniff. An exotic sensual fragrance seeps into my lungs, and I find myself closing my eyes in involuntary reaction. It's clearly a splash of my wife's body smell. I put the stopper back in the bottle. From what part of my wife's body do I get this smell? I'm not sure. Why? Because the smell is the accumulation of all my wife's body smells.